Uh, you know, just to, uh, I guess, get started, uh, recap last week, I thought, uh, um, you know, offensively we did some really good things, just what we expected from our offensive line. I think uh, the, the, the uh, one of the positives uh, out, of the, out of the whole game was Mike Matthews. I think him being able to start his first game really get us targeted. We made some adjustments in the game. He handled them very, very well, uh, really after the first series. Uh, played extremely well, and uh, I think that was evident by our ability to, to uh, really rush, rush the football effectively. Um, we mixed in a lot of, uh, um, a lot of different running backs, the, the addition of Trey Carson. I think you know, we, we all saw that uh, he's a great, great uh, addition to this football team. I, I said the week before that I was looking forward to seeing him play um, just short of 80 yards. I think Ben was in, in 80 yards. Um, and uh, Matt Jokel, you know, is kind of uh, separated himself from being Luke Jokel's little brother to a guy who has his own identity now and can play, started, uh, and I thought operated very, very well and, and moved the football, threw it well, um, distributed it well, did not give the football to the other team. And, you know, our, our veteran guys on the perimeter. Defensively, um, where we, where we want to be, no. But uh, I think, uh, you know, you look at the numbers. Uh, we played 16 true freshmen last week, uh, 11 of which were on defense. And I think, I think you saw that. I think uh, we've got some young, talented guys that we're getting into the mix. You know, we're missing six or seven starters. Um, and those guys played and, and played uh, uh, with, with great – uh, effort, not always where they wanted to be, but uh, um, but a, a real real learning experience. I think for those guys, they're going to pay dividends for us down the road. Kicking game wise, you know, I don't know that there's been a better performance here. Uh, when I worked, was here as a uh, assistant, we had pretty good kickers and punters, and, and Saturday, you know, Taylor was perfect, and uh, we had a uh, punter in Drew Kayser who. Averaged what 62.7 a punt. You know, we had a couple punts. Um, I joked after the game, said, uh, you know, we were working on coverage. Now you see why. I'm just concerned that he's he's kicking it so far against some of the returners. We're gonna we're gonna face that. Uh, we got to get down there and cover it. So, um, you know, I, I was very very pleased there. You know, and and. You know, you, you try to uh, not try as a coach after week one. Uh, you, you evaluate everything and, and, and try to keep it in perspective, you know, and, and moving on to week two. And I think we've got a real, uh, a real chance as a football team uh, to improve this week. I think uh, it's obvious from, uh, from the video that the, the guys who came in here yesterday were um, – some guys are, are, are looked at it as a learning experience and are taking that. Other guys are, are looking to get better. But as a team, um, we focused yesterday on the real opportunity for us to get better as a, as a, as a team moving forward for this week. And, uh, you know, that's one of the good things about uh, playing at home for the first couple, couple weeks, you know, the, the, the familiarity and things like that were good, particularly when you got 16 new guys there. But uh, um, I think just leaving yesterday and our discussions about uh, what we have to do as a, as a team moving forward um, uh, in the next week uh, to get better, our, our guys have a good grasp of that, and that's what first games are all about. Uh, other thing I wanted to mention, too, is, is that uh, – uh, for, for many people in this room, they know what Silver Taps is all about. Um, but nationally, uh, it may not be recognized. Uh, the first Tuesday uh, of the month, uh, Silver Taps is a ceremony that recognizes uh, undergraduates or graduates who have passed away. And so tonight uh, at, at 10.30, between 10.15 and 10.30, we have the Silver Taps ceremony for, for Polo and his family. Um, obviously, at the game, there were, you know, 30 to 50 family members there Saturday. So, um, as I expressed to his family and, and his mother, um, once you're part of the Aggie family, you're always part of the Aggie family. And, 
and Silver Tabs will recognize that tonight. Questions? Chip? Kevin, do you have a, a recourse with the SEC for the targeting and ejections? Is, is there a way for you to, to talk to the office about that, and do they evaluate those? Yeah, I, I had a discussion with Steve Shaw yesterday morning, um, and uh, there, there's clarification of a lot of coaches. You know, let me explain how the rule works. The, um, the targeting rule, which is a new rule, um, the penalty is assessed. And then after the penalty is assessed, it goes to a review booth. And the review booth looks at it to see whether the player will be ejected or not. The penalty will, will stand. And uh, the review booth goes through and watches the plays, the angles that they have. And they make a decision or determination at that point whether the player is ejected or not. Once the player is ejected, it is, you, you, it's non-appealable. That's it. So uh, that's the way the rule works. Um, we had a discussion about that yesterday morning. And so DeShazer will be out for the, uh, for the first half of, of, of this week. Do you feel like he should have been ejected, having seen it now on tape? Well, you know, it doesn't matter what I feel like. You know, I, I challenged the call right there on the field. So, you know, you know what my feeling was, but it, that's what happens. You know, you, you, our officials in our league, our SEC officials do as good a job as anybody in the country. And, um, you know, I think there's, there's – uh, in 30 seconds to make a decision on whether a player or player has to leave the game or not, um, you know, that, that's, that's a whole other issue. But that's the rules we have right now. And any time you have a new rule that goes in effect in, in college football, there's always going to be some situations where, you know, it, oh, we didn't think of that or this could be an issue moving forward. But... You know, there's definitely going to be some training tape on that. You know, what comes out of it is we, you have to target lower. And uh, that's, that's just the way it is. And, and sometimes, you know, the natural progression of things from a receiver is to uh, also crouch and prepare themselves for a hit. So, you know, that, that happens like that. The determination was made. Uh, but the, uh, uh, to answer your question from the, from the beginning, that is not appealable once once uh, the ruling's been made on the field. Over here to the far right, Gabe. Coach, it's a small sample size, but could you speak to the profound impact that Jeff Banks, being a former kicker and punter, ha is having on these two guys, Bertolette and Case? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, obviously, you know, we were concerned moving into uh, with an inexperienced punter um, and a kicker who struggled last year. Um, I think you know he, he he's really help them technique wise um, I said Taylor's going to continue to get better coming off of a sports hernia sports hernia surgery this summer uh, and and he's really not at a hundred percent yet you know the, the field goal he made was a high snap which he stopped and one stepped it from you know 40 yards that's that's a strong leg so you know what you saw Saturday too was he's still getting stronger uh, not a, not doing his usual uh, strong kickoff uh, type routine, kind of easing into it. It's not kicking the ball as deep. We didn't want to strain him too much, but get him some work. I think what you'll see is as the season goes on, Taylor gets stronger, and uh, and you know that's kind of the plan. But uh, we, it, you know, he, we've done a good job with him from a stretching standpoint and from a kicking standpoint, and and uh, we don't want to push him too much. But you know, he he's starting to build confidence right now. Over here to the left, Mark, and then we'll come down front to Brent. Coach, uh, you had a couple of guys come out of the game early uh, last weekend with uh, some injuries. Trey Williams uh, looked like uh, Julian was nicked up and didn't come in afterward. And uh, uh, maybe Ricky Seals-Jones. And uh, is Brandon Williams going to be able to come back this week like you mentioned earlier? Day to day. All, all of them. <laughs> Brent? Day to day. We're, we're all day to day, right? That's right. Yeah, um, you, you've mentioned to us before that sitting up there is not one of your favorite things. It's not a real pleasant thing, and I certainly understand that. What what is the reasoning or purpose behind keeping Johnny from visiting with the media to this point? Well, there's a lot of uh, it's, it's you know there, it's not just my decision on on what goes on with that, and so you know uh, we have talked about it. We feel like uh, right now is is not the time. Will there be a time coming up? Sure, there will be. 
I think uh, you look back at the, the events of Saturday um, in, in a volatile situation, the way that that game ended. I don't think that's the time for, for he or DeShazer or anybody. Uh, and that's been past history. Um, but, you know, so yeah. will there be time for him to talk? You bet. I think he's done a lot uh, of media, obviously, December, January, going to the SEC media days in the, in the biggest uh, media, uh, I won't say circus, but the, the biggest media deal there is. You know, there was wonder what he's going to talk then, and he did. You know, I think it's important now, based on where he is, that, you know, his, his focus to try to be our quarterback and a student athlete, that's, that's his biggest challenge right now. Not his challenge to to be here. That's that's me. You know, like I've said before, this is college football. This is not pro football. So, um, you know, that th there will be that will be coming. But uh, certainly, right now, I don't think that uh, uh, we don't think that that uh, it, it's the right time. Okay, to the far right, and then we'll go to the very back. Hi, Coach. Uh, Matt Jokel was out here earlier, and he said that he does things a little bit differently than Johnny. Maybe he's not as flashy. Can you descri describe the energy that both your quarterbacks kind of bring, and is it a different team when Johnny's on the field? You know, I don't know that it's a different team. I, I think all, all the quarterbacks are different, and uh, that's why you, you never hear me. Guys ask me all the time, you know, what about uh, to compare quarterbacks for Case Keenum or Drew Brees or Sam Bradford? Any, I don't compare quarterbacks. They're all different. They all lead differently. They all play differently. Are, are they successful? Yes, but they're, some guys are 5'11", some guys are 6'5", you know. So personalities like everybody in this room is different. I think uh, Matt has, is an example of a guy who has waited his turn, who um, has just kind of toiled away. And, and uh, really the week before um, really earned the right to start ahead of Kenny. And I set both those guys down as late as it was Friday at 5 o'clock. And uh, even in my mind, I knew what was going on. But uh, I wanted to, them to keep competing that whole time. And uh, I brought both he and Kenny in, explained the process for who was going to start the game tomorrow, explained the process of moving forward for the rest of the year, that they're going to be uh, their best competition and the, and the thing that's going to keep them on edge because they're one play away from playing. And um, it's kind of interesting, you know, when I, I told him that and told both of them that at the same time, that doesn't mean that Kenny Hill's not going to play. That means that uh, the plan was for them both to play in the first half. Matt just got in a rhythm and did well. And, and I think he earned the, the, the right to keep playing. You know, what's interesting is after I told both of them that, you know, Kenny, we're getting up walking to the door and you got a freshman turned around, stuck out his fist and said, you got a ball, man, you got a ball. So, you know, all those guys in that room are together and that's what a team's about. You know, the energy that you talked about, you know, yeah, you don't see that. You know, I think anybody who, who watches Johnny knows that, uh, um, he plays with a lot of emotion and a lot of passion in this game. And, and because of that, he gets into a gray area. It's my job, it's our job as coaches to keep that passion and energy going, but make it positive. Does that make sense? And, and that was a discussion that we had yesterday, um, not just with, with him, but with a lot of players. And, and what you don't want to do is kill that emotion and that passion because I think it's what, what separates uh, Johnny from a lot of different players. But what we can do is sit down and say, hey, listen, that same emotion, that same passion can be used positively, and here's how you've got to do that. Does that make sense? To the back, and then we'll come to Ola. Coaches, you've looked at Sam Houston State. What are the challenges you feel like they'll present on Saturday? You know, they're well coached. You know, you're looking at a team, I'll tell you what, all you got to do is look and, and say, uh, anybody who watched North Dakota State last week win their game, it'll get your attention in a hurry. All right? They go to Kansas State and, and, and win, and then you turn on the, you know, not last week's game, but uh, last year's Sam Houston, North Dakota State game, it's a heck of a ball game. And so, you know, our players get that. The other thing that, that uh, is pretty much of a motivation, last year we had our starters play, played pretty well the first half. A lot of those guys that were backups, 
in, in my opinion, lost, lost the second half 28 to 6. And when you turn on that film of the guys who were in the game in the second half, you saw a lot of those guys playing last Saturday. And so, you know, that gets their attention. That's got our attention. This, this team is uh, – Willie Fritz is a heck of a coach. He's been a head coach 19 years, three years there. Um, you know, back-to-back -back, uh, championship appearances, you know, they're, they're not going to be intimidated by coming in here just like they weren't last year. Olin, then we'll get Suzanne. Coach, um, you know, it seems like we talk about Ben Moline every week. And I just – after his game last week, I wonder, uh, is there anything that he doesn't do well? And also <laughs> that his attitude – he seems so – Selfless. Do you find that attitude to be unusual at all now? No, I think what you don't see is the just what we, we just talked about, the amount of emotion and passion that, that Ben Molina plays with. But it, it's, it is – you don't see it from, from the stands, but he talks constantly. He is uh, a talker during the game. Coaches, players, everybody. And he plays with emotion. He cares. And I think you see that in his play. He's a leader by example. Whether he's carrying the ball, then he's covering kicks, he's on a punt team, he just wants to play. And um, he is a, a great example to the young players on this team. He's a great example to the older players on this team, uh, some of which you think they're just a certain position player. Well, you know, this guy is doing whatever he can to help us win. And... Uh, and because of that, you know, he's, he's a great leader. Okay, Suzanne, then Christy. Kevin, because of the disciplinary problems with, what, half your defensive starters sideline for parts of last game and this game, how do you handle that in practice, getting young guys reps? Do the older guys, do they get strictly on scout team, or do you have to balance it out knowing that conference plays in a week? Well, you know, I, I, the announcement of, of uh, the guys Saturday, you know, we knew about that. Uh, two weeks beforehand. So, you know, there, there's been a plan in place to handle that. Um, yeah, so that, that's, there was a practice uh, plan in place for, for the young guys and for the guys who are coming. So, you know, we, we have plenty of time for that, to try to get those guys ready, get them lined up as young players. And, and, uh, but there's no way to, to duplicate you know, the, the uh, tempo and the, the emotion, as I said, you know, you, you know what you're doing, but the pressure to perform uh, in, in front of in, in that environment can be very, very difficult on a young guy. And that's what experience is all about, you know. In, but, uh, yeah, we, we, we've got a plan for that. We, we've worked through that. You know, we get Kirby back this week, uh, which will, will help us in the rotation in the middle. Um, but you know, over the course of, of, of the time, though, those guys were still practicing with us and, and still engaged and, and still um, uh, with our defense. And, and, and uh, that way they're able to still get their mental reps, still get their technique, and, and, and still be ready, you know, when, when we need them to go. Christy, and then we'll follow up with Brent. I know you weren't happy about um, Johnny's penalty there at the end of the game, but were you, were you um, like, what, what were your thoughts on how he's been pretty much vilified in the media for those things he did on the field since then? You know, it's, it's kind of amazing to me because um, uh, my dad called me and said, have you seen all this stuff that's going on Saturday night? And, and uh, I said, what are you talking about? He said, just turn the television on. And, what, uh, yeah, when, and he came off the field. You know, basically, I, I made two statements to him, um, neither one of which should he have responded to. They, were, they weren't questions. They were direct statements that I can't repeat right now. And so what's amazing to me is the perception that he, you know, he, didn't, he ignored me. The worst thing that could have happened was for him to reply based on what I told him. So for people to, to say, hey, you know what, he, he's not listening to his coach, I, I, and there's no discipline on this team, you know, they're not around this football team. They're not around this, this program. And a lot of people who have uh, made statements about that weren't anywhere near that sideline. I haven't heard one guy who, or person who was on the sideline who heard what was said speak up about what, that, what happened. So, you know, you can get uh, – a uh, different perspective sitting in a, uh, in a studio or behind your television 
uh, then you would have gotten live. So, you know, that, that, that's where we are with that. You know, we, we met yesterday as a, as a team, which we do every Monday. And uh, the three things that we talk about, that I talk about from the beginning with this program are playing hard, playing smart, and being physical. And those are three things that I quantify every, every Saturday. Um, we talk uh, about the first one, playing hard, and evaluate players every Saturday on their effort. Some guys Saturday play great with a lot of effort. Might not have done everything right, but they're playing with great effort. Other guys didn't, and they have to raise their level. Playing smart, that was addressed yesterday. And championship teams and great teams uh, play smart. Um, penalties like that, which I think my exact words Saturday night were, that wasn't very smart. Uh, or Deshaun Hall. And, but, you know, I look back at that, we had five penalties for the whole football game. So, you know, an undisciplined team doesn't have only five penalties. You know, it's, it's the, the, the couple of things that, that brought out uh, not very smart football, got two guys ejected. I, I wouldn't have uh, uh, challenged DeShazer's hit if I didn't think it was a good hit. So, you know, I think you have to put everything in perspective. You know, what, what's going on? What, where, is, you know, where is this football team and where can we get better? And we can definitely be a smarter football team. But, um, you know, the number of penalties, I think, is positive. If you're, you know, at, at three, four penalties a game, I think you live with that. Um, you get up 8, 9, 10, 11, you know, then you got some other issues. Um, but we're, we're playing football. We're not, you know, we're not playing badminton out here. So th there's going to be some aggressive, aggressiveness. There's going to be things that happen. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, that's where we are. And uh, being physical and, and, and all three of those areas are areas we evaluate every Monday. And um, the discussion that we had yesterday, uh, both in here and on the field, uh, I think our players understand that. And there's, there's not much confusion on, on, on what goes on here in this program. Brent, and then we'll go to Jimmy. I was going to ask about Manziel walking off the field. And I mean, you hear through your ear hole, right, when he was had his head this way. But anyway, along those lines, <laughs> you addressed it a little bit. In terms of, at some point, do you your quarterback's taken a pretty good beating from national media, but maybe one four-letter network in particular. At some point, do you address that? Or, or? Yeah, I, I think I did. I, I, you know, I think what has separated him on the field, uh, you know, he was antsy. I said that right Saturday night, that uh, he was pressing. He was antsy. He wanted to play. And, uh, you know, the thing that, that, that makes him who he is is his passion and emotion. He plays a game um, and is trying to do something every play to score, whether it's him, whether it's his, his teammates, whatever it is. And I think, I think that's why his teammates uh, enjoy playing with him. I'm, as a matter of fact, I know it. And uh, is it a challenge at times? You bet it's a challenge. But, uh, you know, at a certain point, um, you know, we, we, it's our, our challenge to try to keep that energy positive. And uh, a lot of things are being made out of, out of, of some things that uh, um, went on last year. I had somebody come to me and ask me about some money signal or whatever, you know, and that, you know, same thing he did all last year. And a couple other players in the country doing that. But when he does it, you know, there's an issue. Let's tie it to something else. And, and uh, have, have, has he kind of painted himself in a box with that, with, with some other issues? Probably. But uh, at, at a certain point, you know, um, his actions on the field um, are, are going to have to show where he is. And I think no one wants to be more successful than he does. No one's going to play this ha game harder than he does. No one's going to practice harder with these guys than he does, and his teammates understand that. I understand that. Uh, and, you know, to answer your question earlier, um, why isn't he out of here talking? I don't think right now that him coming here and, and saying the word is going to change some people's opinion about who he is. So, uh, you know, that's my job as a coach. 
And, uh, you know, as I said before, this is college football. It's not pro football. Uh, you know, so he, you know, it's my job as a coach to, to prepare him. My job as a coach to keep his energy positive, try to channel that energy and, and that emotion and make it positive. And, um, you know, at the appropriate time, uh, he, he'll, he'll be able to speak for himself. Okay, we'll go Jimmy and then back here to see she'll wrap us up. Coach, uh, you, you've answered this pretty eloquently. I was just going to ask you if you felt disrespected like some of the analysts had, had thrown out there. You've kind of, if you want to elaborate more. I don't, go ahead. I don't have to elaborate don't. more. I just I, told you the whole story yeah, I, yeah, and I, how it happened to me. Right. And, 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 you know, uh, I, like I said, I'm, I'm <clears> shocked that, uh, not shocked in the word, I shouldn't be shocked by anything anymore. But people got to talk about something. And uh, of all the things that there is to talk about in this program, of all the things that, that you want to make an issue about, that is probably the last thing that needs to be talked about. Because as I said, I just, I just told you what happened. Now I didn't think twice about it. What I, what I was going to switch to was, uh, do you have to, it's so much scrutiny brought on him as the, is that something that has surprised no, it you doesn't guys surprise or your me. locker room as this year is starting to unfold? Have you no. had to readdress that more than expected? Or no. More re no. No. Okay. No. I, I think that uh, I think where we are is where we are, and uh, obviously after last Saturday, um, uh, people want to make a story out of anything that happens on this team right now, and in a way, right now for me as a coach. Um, I'm not going to complain about it because it, it's kind of putting a wall up between us and everybody. Last question, Ed Cease. Kevin, along those same lines, you've had to make a lot of suspensions. So does this team need more leaders or they just need certain players to do a better job of following the leaders in place? Well, I, it's, uh, I think it's a little bit of both. I think what you're, you're looking at is um, from a release standpoint, it looks like that just happened. Uh, from a timing standpoint, it happened weeks ago. And so the ability to be able to deal with that, I mean, as, as, as much as the first week of, of football camp, uh, for, our, for us and the team, we had moved on. The fans, everybody else, um, it all looked like it all happened at one time. Does that make sense? So um, there, there's two different areas you're talking about. And, and, and the ability to get that communicate it, get that fixed amongst the players. Um, I think we've done a good job of that. Um, you know, the, the, I think uh, uh, the Shazer's deal was an unfortunate situation. Um, that's a, that's a could go either way kind of situation. Um, Deshaun, yeah, that's, that, that's a learning experience from a true freshman who's frustrated, who just got here and is trying to make plays and play with emotion. But, uh, you know, we, 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 we'll get that handled. We'll get that fixed. So, you know, that, that's, that's where that whole thing is. Uh, leadership comes in many forms. And uh, I think you, you had a great example of that in Ben Molina. I think you, you, you've got some other examples of that um, across our, our team on the offensive line and Mike Evans. Um, but, you know, do we need to develop more leaders? You bet. But it's hard to do that when you got 16 true freshmen out there playing. They're not worried about leading. They're worried about just getting lined up. And so we've got to have some guys step outside themselves um, besides the guys I just talked about and who are returning players, maybe not returning starters, but older players, and um, kind of help these young guys get, come along. All right, Coach, thank you.